Hi, how are we doing? So in today, in this part of today's lesson, we are going to talk more about the, the D block um, and which is really our transition metals. And there's a lot of words on this slide and I'm going to try to simplify them and go through them mostly in the, in the, in the examples, but I do need, there's a little bit, there's a couple of things I need to talk about. So I've mentioned a couple of times that the transition metals, uh, have the tendency to form more than one ion. Common example would be iron. Iron can either form a plus two or it can form a plus three. When iron reacts with oxygen, iron plus three makes standard rust. It makes the rust like th that that's on a car, like it's brown or reddish. When plus two reacts with oxygen, it makes a white powder. Uh, white crusty powder, very different than rust, but it's still a combination of iron and oxygen. And we have to have a way to keep those two separated because if I just said iron and oxygen, people would be like, well, how, how do I know if it's iron two or iron three? And of course, there's a way to do that. One of the ways that we do that is we use something, we use the Roman numeral nomenclature system. So to refresh your memories, since most of you aren't Roman or members of the Roman um, empire, you might not remember all of your Roman numerals. So an I is a one. An II is a two. An III is a three. An III or an IV is a four. A V is a five. A VI is a six, VII is a seven, VIII, oops, is an eight, IX is a nine, and X is a 10. The reason why that's important is because we're talking about the charge of the transition metal Cation. Okay. So how we represent that is if I wanted to use a compound that has iron with a plus two charge, I would write iron Roman numeral two. And if I wanted to use a compound that had iron with a plus three charge, I would write iron Roman numeral three. And so now as a chemist, I know if I, what type of iron I'm dealing with and I also can predict what type of products, products or compound it can make. Everything else is the same. This stuff in the middle, I'm going to kind of go through. Basically, we, we figure out the charge of the anion using our periodic table. We multiply the anion by the anion subscript. Uh, we change it to positive. Then we divide. We'll go through it. It'll be great. So here we go. I'm going to actually skip the first one and come back to it. I'm going to go with Fe203 first, okay? So step number one says use the periodic table to find the charge of the anion, of the nonmetal. And according to the polyatomic, according to the periodic table, um, oxygen is in this particular column right here, which means it has a charge of minus two. So oxygen has a charge of minus two. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the subscript of the nonmetal. by its charge. So in this case, the subscript is a three times its charge, which is minus two, 
gives me a charge of minus six. Okay, so if the charge here is minus two, the total net charge is minus six. Next thing I do is I change the nonmetal charge to positive. So in this case, minus six becomes plus six. I then divide by the metal's subscript. So I'm going to take the six plus the plus six divided by two which gives me plus three. That's the charge of the transition metal. So what I've done is now I know that iron is a plus three in this case. So I can write iron, Roman numeral three, and then oxygen becomes oxide. Now, in the case of the rest of them, I'm not going to go write all the steps. I'm just going to kind of do it, okay? So what I see here in the case of CuCl2, right, I see that Cu has got a 1 behind it and Cl has got a 1 behind it. And I'm going to go on to my periodic table. I'm going to find Cl, which is in this column right here. And that column is responsible for, ha for having a minus 1 charge. So uh, chlorine has a minus one charge. Minus one charge times one subscript is minus one. Change the minus one to plus one. Now divide the plus one by the subscript. One divided by plus one divided by one is plus one. That tells me the charge of copper. So I'm gonna yell out to the world the charge of copper by writing copper Roman numeral one, chloride. Okay, hopefully the rest of these won't be too bad. So we'll kind of go through them a little bit quicker. Um, so the ratio here is one to two. So I know that oxygen has a charge of minus two. Minus two times two is minus four change that to a plus four, divide it by one, manganese is a plus four. So manganese, IV, oxide. Lastly, um, my ratio here is uh, three to two. Um, I noticed that nitrogen on the periodic table has a charge of minus 3. So nitrogen is going to be a minus 3. Minus 3 times 2 is uh, minus 6. Change minus 6 to a plus 6. Divide by 3, and I get a plus 2 for nickel. So that means that nickel... is Roman numeral two, and it's nitride. Okay. Now, so that's when you write the name. The other part of this is exactly the same uh, in terms of writing the formulas. The only difference is the Roman numeral tells you the charge of the transition metal ion. It's great. So let's do it. Cobalt has a Roman numeral of three. 
that tells me that cobalt has a charge of plus 3. So, cobalt, 3 plus. Chloride, chlorine, column 17 of the periodic table means it's got a minus 1 charge. So, Cl minus 1. Crisscross my charges down. Rewrite. CO, CL3. I'm going to check my ratio, which is 1 to 3. Uh, can't simplify, but I don't write 1s, so I'm going to write CO, CL3. Not too shabby. Cadmium doesn't have a it doesn't have a Roman numeral, but cadmium is a transition metal. And about two days ago, I told you that cadmium always had a charge of plus two. So if I were you, I would write that in my periodic table that cadmium always has a charge of plus two. But that's just me. So cadmium has a charge of plus two. Sulfide has a charge of minus two. So I'm going to write them next to each other. CD is a plus 2. Sulfur is a minus 2. We crisscross our charges down. And we rewrite CD2S2. We're going to check our ratio. It is 2 to 2 which can be simplified to 1 to 1. And we don't write 1s, so I'm just going to write CD S. All right. All right, so to complete these last two, um, I see that nickel has a Roman numeral of 2, which tells me that nickel's charge is going to be plus 2. Iodide is in the last column of the periodic table. It has a charge of minus 1. So I know that iodine has got a charge of minus 1. Uh, I'm going to write them next to each other. So I'm going to write nickel with a plus 2, iodine minus 1. I'm going to crisscross my charges down just like I've been doing. And I'm going to rewrite. Nickel, uh, 1, iodine, 2. I'm going to check my ratio. And I see that it is 1 to 2, which cannot be simplified. So I'm going to rewrite, but I'm not going to write the 1. So I'm going to write Ni, I2. The last one is manganese 2 oxide. I see that manganese has a Roman numeral of 2. So that tells me the transition metal of man or the, the charge of Manganese is a plus 2. Oxygen, according to the periodic table, is right here. It's in this column, which tells me it's a minus 2. So I'm going to write these side by side. MN, uh, Mn plus 2, O minus 2. I'm going to crisscross my charges down, just like I did before. And um, I'm going to then rewrite. So I'm going to have manganese 2, O2. My ratio is 2 to 2, which I can simplify to 1 to 1. And I don't write 1s, so when I rewrite this, it's going to become 
MN. Oh. Okay, so that's how you work with elements that are with compounds that have metals from the, the D block or the transition metals. Um, again, if you have any questions, let me know or let your teacher know. Um, otherwise, uh, good luck with your practice, and I will see you next time. Bye now.